Hampton police say one of the teens hit in an overnight shooting may not make it. And whoever pulled the trigger is still out there. That is our top story tonight on 13 News Now at 5. I'm Philip Townsend. And I'm Nicole Livas. Janet and David are off tonight. The gunman shot three teens at an apartment complex on Cunningham Drive. 13 News Now's Nico Clemens is following the story live in Hampton. Nico? And Nicole, neighbors say whoever pulled the trigger, they are worried he may come back or whoever pulled the trigger may come back. Now, before we were kicked off the property, I spent some time at the building where police say someone shot three young teens. And while neighbors say it's very unfortunate, they're not surprised, but it's still a scene they, they don't want to remember. Frightening moments inside this apartment building in Hampton. The sound of gunshots rang through the hallway very early in the morning. Leslie Lewis heard them loud and clear. I heard a pow pow and glass breaking and they got louder. This was about seven, eight of them. Lewis lives steps away from where police say someone shot three teenagers, a 15 year old and two 14 year olds. Police say the teens were standing in the foyer when bullets started flying. You can see a bullet hole shattered the glass door at the building. I looked in the door right there, there was a little bit of blood. I spoke with several neighbors at the Peninsula Grove apartment complex. Some say they now want to move. Others say this is nothing new. I'm not very surprised. Yeah, it's wild, man. I mean, it's it, it, this isn't a horrible apartment complex, but uh, it happens. Know, man. Yeah, Virginia's, it happens here. Yeah, it's pretty bad. When my buddies lived here about, I want to say like a year and a half ago, yeah, they had gunshots downstairs. Some dude got shot, and they actually called the cops, and they came and everything. Police say the 15-year-old's injuries are life-threatening. The two 14-year-olds are expected to pull through. Lewis, who grew up in Newport News, says the violence needs to stop. I thought it was like 16, 17, 18, or maybe older. But wow, that's. <sighs> Police do not have a motive for the shooting. There's also no information on a suspect. Live in Hampton, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. Thanks, Nico. Okay, let's turn to the weather now. A hot and sunny end of the week. Clear blue skies from the eastern shore to the Norfolk Botanical Garden. Great day out there. Meteorologist Tim Pandagis is in now with a forecast for all your Friday night plans. Hey, Tim. Hey, Philip. You know, at least it's not as hot as it was yesterday. We were in the low 90s. This time of year, 76 is more about where we should be. We're closer to that today, but still a little bit above it. 79 at the current time, but look at the dew point. Very comfortable uh, at 60 right now. Earlier, it was down in the 50s. 80 right now in Surrey, it's 79, Chesapeake, 70 in Gloucester, 80 in Ahoskie, 84 Williamsburg, upper 70s in Hampton, mid 70s in Virginia Beach, upper 70s down to Elizabeth City. Compared to yesterday, we're right around 91 this time of day, and we're 12 degrees cooler in Newport News, 13 degrees cooler in Hampton, and 12 degrees in Virginia Beach. Satellite showing clear skies over the majority of the area, a little more cloud cover hanging on the closer you get to the Albemarle Sound and down through the Outer Banks. All that's associated with the front that dropped through our area yesterday evening, kind of hanging out through central eastern North Carolina this evening. Here's how it looks on future casts. As we go through the overnight hours, a few extra clouds floating into our skies. Nothing really to bring us any precipitation, though. Temperatures dropping in the upper 60s to around 70 for overnight lows. Tomorrow morning, we start off with a little bit of an excess of cloud cover. That gives way to a little more sunshine through the rest of the day. And eventually we'll see the chance go up for a few isolated showers or storms later on. This evening, though, 75, comfortable and partly cloudy. We'll talk more about that weekend outlook and take you through the entire weekend future cast in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Tim. An update now on that volunteer youth church leader accused of sexually abusing a teenage boy. Matthews County jury convicted Kenneth Scott Marshall of forcible sodomy. Police arrested him last year. They say he abused the then 15 year old boy who looked up to Marshall as a brother. The jury recommended he spend 15 years behind bars, but he won't actually be sentenced until January. The church removed him as a volunteer when he was arrested. Tonight, two men are behind bars accused in a double homicide two months ago. Norfolk police arrested Alfonso Smith and Laquan Pooler this week. Detectives say Smith shot Tamian Davis and Marquis Turner off Military Highway. That's near the Colonial Day School. And this was in July. They are now charged with second degree murder. The other man arrested Pooler is charged as an accessory after the fact. Police are staying quiet about a possible motive for the shooting. An inmate at a jail in Pennsylvania now facing new charges for a 2016 murder in Norfolk. Police secured warrants against Saquon Steeps. He'd been in the Luzerne, Luzerne County Correctional Facility for an unrelated crime since April. Norfolk detectives say Steeps killed Charlene Riles back in December of 2016. Police found her shot at a home on Garen Avenue and medics took her to the hospital where she did not make it. Steeps is now charged with second degree murder. 
The Commonwealth's top prosecutor is renewing his call to forgive Virginians who have been convicted of nonviolent minor offenses. Virginia has one of the strictest laws in the country when it comes to forgiving criminal convictions, and that can take a toll. 13 News Now reporter Jacqueline Lee spoke to Attorney General Mark Herring and joins us now in the newsroom. Jacqueline. Nicole, here's the deal. If you are convicted in underage, your record will get automatically wiped. But the Attorney General highlighted if you are a convicted adult, you are not forgiven, even if you're doing everything right and you get rehabilitated. Not only does this affect your ability to get a job, it even affects your ability to get an apartment. Virginia stands as one of the worst states in the country that doesn't offer any sort of forgiveness for nonviolent offenses. Take marijuana or alcohol possession, for example. If it's a minor drug offense that uh, was a long time ago, because in Virginia, those convictions are permanently on your record without any real opportunity to have them expunged. And here's why it's a big deal. Because of these charges or convictions, the Virginia Poverty Law Center says it limits someone's employment, housing, and educational opportunities. Herring pointed to a woman he spoke with that has a drug charge conviction and has been out in the community for eight years. As had jobs you know, that she's applied for, that she's otherwise qualified for, but gets turned down for. Those opportunities have been foreclosed because there's no method in Virginia to have that expunged from your record. Virginia is one of 10 states that doesn't offer a record closure for adult convictions. While lawmakers have proposed bills in the General Assembly for several years, they never made it out of committee. So the Attorney General is looking at other states' clean slate policies to see how they could work in Virginia. Some period of time is usually what most states look to to you know, ensure that somebody really has turned their lives around and that they're a responsible member of the community. And the attorney general told me he's speaking up now so that when the General Assembly convenes in January, lawmakers can get the ball rolling. Jacqueline Lee, 13 News Now. Thank you, Jacqueline. Today, inmates in one local jail getting access to resources that are going to help them when they're released. The Virginia Peninsula Regional Jail hosting its first re-entry fair. Organizations and agencies that help with things like housing, employment, and social services were all there. The idea of the fair, if people can get a job and a place to live when they get out of jail, they're more likely to stay out of trouble. It lets us know that the community as a whole is not against us. They're here to help us and that people will, hand, will extend their hand, especially to help you get back on track. Now they've got the face, they've got the name, they've got the contact, they've got everything they need for success when they get out. And we've got jobs here, so they might even walk away with a job after this. More than 20 vendors were all there today. They've represented everything from the DMV to benefits services. We've learned a student in Virginia Beach is facing charges related to a gun scare. Police started investigating this week when they heard a student was considering bringing a gun to the Bayside sixth grade campus on Wednesday. Officers identified the student who we now know is charged with disturbing the peace. Police did not find a gun though. We have not learned whether that student faces any disciplinary action at school. Five middle school students sent to the hospital after their school bus went into a ditch. It happened on Babtown Road in Suffolk around 715 this morning. School officials tell us the driver swerved to avoid hitting an animal. We're told 14 students were on the bus headed to John F. Kennedy Middle School. Medics took three of them to Centaire OBC Hospital to get checked out. And two other students' parents took them there too. But police say no one was hurt that badly. Students and staff at Kellum High School had to briefly evacuate the building today after they started to smell gas. Virginia Beach firefighters checked out the scene this morning. School officials tell us they found a small gas leak and they were able to take care of it pretty quickly. Everyone was allowed back in after about 10 minutes. New at 5, help has arrived in a big way for Navy sailors. It's the new My Navy Career Center at Joint Expeditionary Base Little Creek. It's designed to give sailors all the help they need when it comes to their individual human resources needs. 13 News Now reporter Mike Gooding was there for the grand opening. It's said a ship in port is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. And so sailors go to sea. And while underway, they need to be unburdened by concerns of back home. Don't take pictures. There we go. And that's why they cut the ribbon on the new My Navy Career Center at Little Creek. The idea is to provide a one-stop shopping repository on information, a place where sailors can get answers to all the human resources questions they might have by phone, email, or online chat. 
I want sailors to have the ability to do this on their time in a very efficient manner. So we're gonna to try to expand the, the services and the, and the means for them to access the services so they can get it done quickly. Got a question about a paycheck or career management or your education? Then this is the place to go. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trained customer service experts will man the phone to get you timely, real-time, rapid response answers. And it's good for us because now we've got a force that's more focused on the job at hand. But having our folks available to them round the clock really adds a lot of, uh, eases a lot of the burden, I think, on our sailors and their families. This is the Navy's second such center, the first in Millington, Tennessee, in its first year resolved over 375,000 service requests, an average of 1,350 inquiries per day. Mike Gooding, 13 News Now.